uh, summit dads to, to get closer to their kids is actually creating bridges between dads and summit dads and their kids. Uh, we, we found that uh, summit dads just send money, send, provide financially mm -hmm. and otherwise, but really uh, are absent. And the statistics shows us that uh, uh, young kids coming from uh, absent father or fatherless homes are are going through a lot. Wait, say that again. I just, I just want to, I just want to sure. recap quickly. Yeah. So, sing, so you called single dads because you're absent emotionally, and and all you're doing is you're just providing funds. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, not not all single dads are like that, but okay. but we see that uh, parenting for especially young single dads mm -hmm. is is taking a position that as long as I supply. Uh, provision money or financial resources and I'm okay and then my life moves on yeah and also we found that most um, uh, single moms the, the, the custody or the the, the child care defaults to the mom mm -hmm. and then fathers so just the primary caregivers primary caregivers yeah. and then the fathers just move on with their lives so there's and very trying to stop it yeah so there's very rare because I see uh, and I follow him on TikTok sure uh, Lucas Khatev oh okay mm -hmm. um, he's always Doing videos with his uh, daughter. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and he's and a single. Son. And, yeah. And son. yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming to my show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh okay. perfect. Okay. perfect. Yeah. So, what type of what type of a single dad would you put him under? Yeah, well, so single dad is not about marital status or whether you're dating or not. So, so, so as long as you you're raising a child either on your own or co-parenting with with someone else, mm. but where the child does not live with both of you, mm -hmm. so it's not about the relationship. So. So Lucas and others that are raising either cooperating with someone else fit in our definition. Our definition of single fathers are those fathers that are, are either primary caregivers by themselves or cooperating with someone else or whom they don't live with. Okay. So that's interesting. Why is it, do you think, that uh, single parents, uh, single mothers rather, are often uh, given the, the, the label single mothers? But dads, it's just like, oh, it's these are... Times. The stereotypes, even the courts, uh, uh, through separation or divorce, the courts will not think twice to, to send the custody to the mom. Mm. In fact, a friend of mine who, who has been going through a divorce, he had to fight through the courts four years to take custody. He had to prove to the court that the mother was not psychologically or mentally stable mm. or even financially okay, fit, fit to, to take custody. But the courts kept on saying, no, it has to be. I want to find out more about that. We just need to take a short break sure. and unpack really why is that and how do we uh, try to get that stigma over? What's what's the way Absolutely. forward and in, in trying to help uh, to get that stigma out? <clears throat> Obviously, uh, dads, in terms of if we look at the stats and all the stuff they've done, yeah. it's quite a difficult thing to, mm. to change overnight. It's an ongoing uh, conversation. I'm actually quite shocked that it's paid up with uh, Youth Day. Mm. Uh, that really, the last time that happened, I think it was about two years ago. Um, so it's, it's quite cool that there's also this great initiative that Stembis was doing, um, especially celebrating modern dads um, who take their, their role in, in, in a high esteem because it's, it's important for me. That's, that's one of the reasons why I don't have a child at all. Uh, uh, what's one of the reasons for? Well? One of the reasons for me is that I want to be a hundred percent sure that I will be there for the kid. Definitely. Uh, because I, I never had that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so I'm I'm being a there's a bit of a selfishness uh, that that comes with it, but that's really the main reason for me mm. uh, for not uh, for not having a kid and also to, to also make sure that financially that you know one is completely hundred percent uh, because people are quick to make babies. Uh, and then um, when the child's here, you can't even buy the pampers. Can, can mm. one ever be 100% sure of those those Tembiso? I, I mean, I wonder about that because sure, one but... minute you could have money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you could be a business owner. That's Tomorrow true. the business falls uh, mm. um, by the wayside. Emotionally as well. And you can never guarantee, guarantee. that your That's partner true. will never want to walk away, right? That's true. Can, yeah. Is there a certain level of certainty that one can have? Before... Uh, it's a chance. It's a decision you make and it's a chance you take. Mm. I always say parenting has got very little to do with affordability. And being provision, provision sometimes just means that, yes, you provide. But but when you provide time and and access to the child, it changes everything. And I don't know if you've read about my story. I was an absent father. By absent father, I mean that uh, my kids were raised by my family. 
and uh, we did your my, my 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 side of the family yes sure. yeah and i didn't have a relationship with them so it just occurred at some point that i think i returned overseas and my daughter was 12 she tried to introduce me to her friend she was conflicted she couldn't she couldn't figure whether she could introduce me by name or as dad and that mm. that hit hard and uh, i had to make a decision that uh, this needs to change and mm -hmm. it is on that on that day that I decided it's going to be different now But I I also challenged her to do something about it. So that it became a two-week two So so what did she end up introducing you as? I think she just called me by name. Wow. Yeah, and it didn't sit well with me. That's deep mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have that would have made me cry. Yeah, that would have definitely made me we, we as men we are emotional Of course, uh, uh, believe it or not um, Why did you start this initiative? <sighs> Because I've been, it's been, it's been on my mind, Emoji, for, for many years, because when I turned that corner and I looked in my society, in my community, even in my own family, fathers, my brothers were just providing, sending stuff, sending gifts, and, I, and it occurred to me that it can't be okay. Mm. And I said, there could be another father who was in my situation elsewhere uh, that doesn't know how to turn the corner, then I had to make a decision. I only actually launched the, the network, the movement in 2023, uh, but it's been in my mind for about six years, and and now, as you can imagine, it's moved, and and, and we're creating more awareness. It's it's really about creating or establishing conversations where we 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 we, we demystify the notion that fathers or dads are not inherently who's your caring, who, or, yeah. not inherently caring. Yeah. I like caring, that. Yeah. So, and yeah. you, just uh, two seconds. I yeah. like that inherently. What mm. is innate in us? Because exactly. I think that's why then the courts also default to saying the primary yeah. caregiver will be the mother because mm. innately we're caregivers. They just right? think we provide us. We're not inherently uh, able to right. nurture and raise kids. Yeah, and 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 you. And that's a stigma. No, we differ very, very, very strongly. In fact, a friend of mine who's not here is raising three kids by himself. And another friend of mine is raising his seven years, seven year old daughter by himself. And they're doing just fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you do the, uh, uh, is it talks? Yeah, I've got a podcast. We've got a website. We've got a community on online. We've got a forum. And uh, we are on, on all socials. We've got a, a more so far or some of that's find us on, on okay. YouTube. Okay, mm. because I, I strongly believe, <clears throat> first and foremost, and I love your initiative, um, that something like this as well, the Department of Education needs to get involved. Sure. Um, and, and, and some of these talks should actually be taking place even at a primary school level. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I don't think we are talking enough, and that's why you get uh, and you end up fighting in courts, uh, yeah. single dads fighting in court. Yes. Because it's not normalized. No, uh, no. It, it, We've actually started an initiative of a boy chart. I was, yes. I was talking on another podcast where we said we, we, <clears> we, 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 ca we, catch, we catch single dads at, at mid-30s or mid-40s, yeah. but there's an oversupply of young people that not, don't know anything about parenting. Yeah. So, so prevention is better than treatment. So, mm. so we're working with schools. Obviously, we don't have budgets for everyone, but... We're trying to work with But the schools. Department of Education has budget. Well, hopefully. Yeah, they <laughs> they've got budget. Let's yeah. talk about uh, the network and, and the work that it does. So, I mean, you say you are on, you're basically exposed, right? Sure. And you are spreading the word about what you do. But what is it that you do? What does the network seek to do? Well, the network is seeks to build the bridges between between kids and, and their fathers, but also to make the single moms aware that uh, they should try to create an environment where fathers want to reach to their kids. I get a lot of young people, young and old, saying to me, how can your network help us regain access? Because they go through the mom, usually. Mm -hmm. Whether the child has a cell phone or not, somehow single fathers think that they need to seek permission mm -hmm. from the mom to speak to the, or to spend time with the yeah. child. Uh, we're trying to, 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 to demystify the, the idea that we have to go through that route, especially if the child is big enough. They can make their own decisions that I want to come and fetch you or I want to visit. Mm. The second thing that we're doing is to create awareness <coughs> around this thing that we just discussed. Fathers also can nurture and raise kids. Mm. And it's not, it's not a gender role. And it's a parenting role. And we are also creating an, an, uh, an awareness with the single moms that if you block access, to because most moms that I speak to they say I'm wearing two hats and I'm doing fine. It's not possible to be a, a father and mother to the same 100%. child. It's not biologically and physically possible. Mm. So we always say even if you've got a squabble and issue with the dad, the child should not suffer. Mm. It should always be in the interest of the child. And parenting has got nothing to do with emotions. Remove emotions from it 
make sure that uh, the father has access. 90% of, of homeless kids that we see in the streets come from fatherless homes. I must tell you mm. that um, even from a spiritual perspective, uh, the, the lack of fathers uh, and its impact extends beyond just physical, um, social, Absolutely. economic, you know, you see it, ex it really extends beyond all of that and mm -hmm. both for men and women. So even the fathers that you see, I mean, such as yourself, I don't know if you grew up in a, in a, no, I had a mother and father, I'm a mother and father. big family yeah. and, and, and I didn't have, well, no, I had access to my father, but I didn't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. Something that I worry about, about the kind of the, um, I, want, I want to say caliber of men that go through your network as well. I mean, as much as you are advocating for their rights, are sure. you ensuring that these are healthy men to have gain, to gain access oh, to we get... <laughs> their children? Because that is, uh, that is a concern. I would imagine that absolutely. from a mother's perspective, mm -hmm. if you're saying you're going through straight to the child, mm -hmm. I need to ensure that you're okay. Of course, of course. You know, you keep your word, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You can, can you hear the, the mother part now? Eh? Yeah, 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 you heard that part. I'm glad she asked it because most yeah. mothers say, no, you guys are hot and cold. Yeah. It depends on your mood. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to be present. Sometimes you don't show up. So, yes, we've got a panel of experts on, on our network. Uh, no, what types? What types? Yeah. Doctors, psychologists, uh, parenting psychologists, uh, clinical psychologists. So, what, before I started the network, I had to look for these people. And I said, would you be able to form part of my network and provide pro bono help? So obviously we don't screen everyone, but we get all <coughs> kinds of dead coming to us and say, no, help me. And I've been to the courts and I'm still blocked. And one young man last week, and I spoke at the empowerment conference, he said, I'm 19 years old, my, we're raising a two year old, I've been blocked mm. over the phone and I can't, be. why? Because I don't pay maintenance. Mm. And then again, that's another notion that single moms, I'm hoping they're listening. The fact that he does not pay maintenance does not mean that he should not have access to the child mm. and because he's got all the rights to have access to the child regardless whether he lives with him or here or whether he pays him for, for maintenance mm. or not i've got a friend exactly in that situation it doesn't matter if there's no money he's emotionally at least if he's no. trying to wanting to see the kids uh why not why not Absolutely. all right if we want to find out more about your initiative? Dead, yes, deadconnections.org and then on all socials, including YouTube, uh, through Dead Network. Okay, when's your next? I hear you are working with Empower Works on Empower yes. Men. Yes, um, yeah, we had a, an event in March, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be at the uh, South African podcast um, and, and festival this tomorrow and Saturday. And we've got a. Um, with uh, DJ Spoo. Yeah, we've, we're gonna, and, we're gonna and have Nicholas. A, exactly. Yeah. We're gonna have a booth there. We're gonna be invite, inviting some of the moms and some of the dads as well to come to our studio. And um, just in terms of Father's Day um, gift ideas. Yeah, do you, we. Do you want socks and ties? <laughs> yeah, anything that can help us actually form a community and, 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 and bring the. In <laughs> fact, we've got a hike on Saturday for some of the dads. Sorry, oh, some of the dads and the son. Oh, it's nice. starting at seven seven o'clock, uh, and then this is gonna be a nice one because it's 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 a precursor to Sunday. Lovely. Mm. That's great. I remember doing. I just thought of something that I used to do: uh, jeeps and beds. <laughs> jeeps and what's that? Jeeps and beds. Yeah. So we'd take uh, we'd take fathers and sons go on like this jeep trail oh okay yeah I, I form part of the jeep network but we haven't done it with the sun so this is the first initiative because and again before i leave the bonding happens when you spend time together and yeah, yeah. activities together yeah not just spending time yeah i remember we, so, we so these kinds of activities actually create bonding and and that's what we're trying to promote absolutely thank you so much for joining Appreciate us it. um kudos on your initiative and definitely continue to do the great work. i appreciate thank your you. time thank, thank you, you.